All right, so I forgot to delete some footage from the camera and it filled up and so I had to delete stuff and I can see myself. Ooh, where was I? Stuff. Oh, why am I so tired? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, I had like my mouth open. And I'm like, ah, ah, ah. ah, that's nothing different. You guys are used to, right? Crazy old Dan. I still can't believe I got like this, this orc guy. That is fantastic. Like, like, okay, so I've got a t-shirt from little kid Seth from, uh, from Toronto. That was just fantastic, having that shirt. I love that shirt. Um, and I got this little model that like, it was take time to do, definitely. So that's just, that's fantastic. I love you guys. You guys are, you guys are so appreciative. Ah. I'm very appreciative of all the love you guys show me. And I love your um, comments too. E Penguin strikes again. Was he like, maybe just one. Anyways, yeah, I misunderstood his CJ's feet. Yes, yes, yes. More battle reports. Okay, okay, they're coming, they're coming, or they're already out. They'll, I want to do at least one or two a week with War Machine, plus the regular uh, fantasy battle reports I'm doing. Hmm. Tin bits, tin bits. Um, Crag. Sorry, just checked. It's actually the thunder. Oh, let's start with his first one. Grenadier with gun mages. UA is pretty good too. It's AOE attack. Game benefits for all models. In AOE are hit. Brutal damage. Three inch AOE. Cool. Blah, 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 blah. Sorry, just checked. It's actually a thunderbolt special attack that affects all models in the AOE. Got a little carried away with brutal damage. It's only directly hit model. Yeah. Thunderbolt's still pretty cool if you just push all of them back. Because technically it's all simultaneous, right? Although if the guys in the back don't get pushed, the guys up front wouldn't get pushed either. Because they just hit the other models. So you like resolve the back ones first and then the front ones? For simplicity's sake? I don't know. The Grenadier, I, I've looked at the Grenadier. It almost seems like you'd really want to put him with trenchers, though. He just kind of has that. Although the lobbing is nice, because you can just lob and hit just about anything. But it's just, without snipe, it just seems like he's a bit short-ranged. Maybe I'm just used to, like, 14, 16 inch range stuff. <laughs> because, yeah, everything I like ranged is either the gun mages, who all can cast snipe on themselves. Or range 10. Although he has range, I think 12. I don't know. I'll look into it, okay? Okay? Okay. Is this the guy Ducky? Yes, please make more. Okay, I will. Shen Wu, really enjoying these videos, Dan. It's just fun to listen to you ramble on about random topics and questions. If you have an opinion on it, how do you feel about painting armies, in War Machine especially, using different schemes that are different from the canon look? Of the faction. For example, painting Meneth primarily black or red. Yay, nay? Yay! Obviously. You doesn't. Like, the fact that I have mostly, like, blue on my guys. Honestly, I'm looking at Jordan, the overseer of all. Uh, and he has his, uh, like, teal green uh, Signar. And they look fantastic. I love his paint scheme, partly because it's really simple, um, it's straightforward. And it just looks very clean and, and great. And they're green. Although they're technically an R green signar. It just, they're very different from anything else I've seen. It's great. Like I saw um, from Kador. A guy in the club has Kador and he has like a dark green with a bit of red. But it's mostly dark green. It looks like mercenaries. I mean, I was like, oh, oh. But then, yeah, they're completely different. The only thing I would say don't go with is like a primarily black army. Because I... You look at all the paint schemes and like white dwarfs and all the things for Warhammer, War Machine, whatever, and there's so many different paint schemes you can do. But whenever it's like all black, it's just, you look at it and you can't see the detail on the model. 
if it's too black. Unless you're doing like a lot of like gray highlighting to just like make the model pop a lot. Um, the black just takes away from the model. And you can say, oh cool, cool, and like lots of black with like some darker colors on it, that's fine. But when you get, you do just all black with like maybe like a bit, like I saw this nid scheme in one of the white dwarfs recently, and it was like all black with some like yellow stuff on it. And it kind of looked cool, except you looked at it and you're like, I can't really see any detail in the model at all. And in person, maybe it looks better, it looks different, but it's just, I don't know, I don't like it. I don't like it. So that's my opinion on that. But yes, if anything, I prefer diversity. I love when people completely change the normal color scheme into something else. Because then you just, yeah, my diversity, more diversity, right? You just, different looking armies, you can play faction against faction, like I did Signar versus Signar, and it, I mean, you can play with different models, but also when they're different colored, it just, it doesn't feel like you're playing your own faction so much. And you can have a lot more fun. You don't have to worry about diversifying as much. But at the same time, there's nothing wrong with painting the, the given color scheme. You know, if you're not that experienced of a painter or you're more into play than paint, then, then this doing the basic colors, there's a reason why they put those colors in there, because they look good. Cool beans. Oh, this whole plate might be a different color. I'll repaint that. Man, every model is so different. Actually, the Defender was probably the easiest thing I've painted because I already painted the Ironclad. So I'm like, uh, Defender, ma. Although the paint job on both of these is incredibly more in favor of the Defender. I painted it much, much better. I just did more like highlighting and I guess I could touch up the ironclad. Although I was thinking destroying the ironclad and getting and just putting on the cyclone. Not destroying him, right? Just like cutting off some of his arms and then magnetizing for a cyclone. It's like, but I'd have to drill into his forearms to magnetize that. And that, that just gets annoying because you don't cover it up. Well, you cover it up with a cyclone, but when you switch to an ironclad, then they're not covered up. So it's, it's not an issue now. I'm sure, magnetizing isn't. isn't Terribly difficult, but uh, I will one day do it, and until that day, I will not do it. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I'm sorry, that was terrible. Um, varnish before flock. Thank you, danger dude. I have been varnishing more of my guys as I paint them, and then I flock them. And beware, if you're, if you're gonna varnish or whatever, do your army coat, uh, the rough coat or whatever it's called, be sure, if you're doing a lot of them at the same time, don't hold each individual one into it because the coat gets like on your, on like a glove, whatever you're holding or on your fingers, and it starts getting super sticky. And then it like starts leaving residue on all the bases of your models and like starts ripping off paint because like you're touching it and it's like and it's just like you have to redo all the bases of your model. And if you've touched any model by accident, you're gonna just destroy what you've done. So be careful when you're doing lots because it builds up quite fast. I was doing like 25 models at the same time. So you just better just lay them down, spray them all. You don't need to get every little bit and the points that are sticking out are gonna get sprayed and those are the parts that are gonna get hit the most. And that's what you want to prevent chipping from, so. That's my theory on it anyways. You don't have to get every inch of it like you do when you're painting. Cool beans. Now I elected for now to leave the banner off the Stormclad. Just because, why not, right? It doesn't, what I heard is in the other rules, maybe it was a point cost upgrade or it did something, I don't know. But the banner did something before. And it's the same model. And so now with the rules changed, 
Like people make their own custom versions of it. This looks cool enough to me, to be honest. Looks cool enough for me. And it was relatively easy to put together. His back didn't fit on perfectly. And there's kind of a gap there, so I'm gonna have to fill in with green stuff and paint it later. I guess I should have done that before priming. But when you got the painting fever, and you really wanna put him on the field of battle, and you wanna play with the big old storm clad, it's a 10 point model, that's a lot of points. That's, this is my most expensive model yet. I was making a list, and then I realized it was exactly the same as another list, except that I didn't have long gunners, and I had a storm clad instead. And it seemed like the list was almost like so much weaker, because I had nine less models. But the storm clad is a beast. He can do a lot. Well, he's not actually a beast. He's a war machine. But <laughs> I am so funny. As a Californian in college in Minnesota, I understand how much you miss Mexican food oh so well. I know, right? <laughs> I'm so excited. Going to California, and oh my goodness. I'm gonna feast on California food. Best part is, is that all my friends there are freaking Mexican. No, not all of them, a lot of them. So I will be able to Well, I can make full advantage of it. I know like certain I know like yeah, restaurants that I really like before and they're not even that expensive. But you get like the best food. Where is this coming from? Like the little like glue strings that like pick up paint and now I'm like chipping my own model. I need I need that won't work. I need a dry brush. No, nope, that didn't work either. Guys, oh, where'd it go? It's gone. Marshall Goten, what do you think of War Machine, Dan? Well. I love it, obviously. I'm a 40k player and think of trying it out. I want to hear your experiences adjusting to the system. Also, is the fluff any good? Let me tell you something. Fluff is great, actually. Uh, I'm not huge in the fluff, to be honest. But what little I have read is good. Um, there's a good story behind all the factions and all the special characters. And it's really fun kind of having your, the leader of your army always being a special character with a story behind them and like a reputation. And you're just like, you know, like I'm fielding Stryker. And Stryker, you just know, has that kind of personality. And you like kind of get behind him. And you can, you can have fun with that. Um, or like Infamous. Um, as for playing, adjusting. Adjusting is more, yeah, it's the move. It's the, yeah, move, activate, or activate, move, action and then finish kind of thing. So it's, that's getting your head around like you have to move things in a very specific order and what you're doing when. Um, I adjusted to it pretty quickly, I think. Um, but it's also always important to think like just because in most scenarios, you kill the caster, you win. And so just having that one very much so head of your army having them protected and sometimes when you could cast a spell and do tons of damage you resist you don't do any you don't cast any spells at all because you want to camp focus and that gives you extra armor and war machine and hordes you can also transfer damage other things so it's the whole experience um to be completely honest is the game itself is more developed than 40k 40k is still awesome and i still love it and i always will especially my orcs all right, so don't think you're losing me, are you 40K avid fans. But War Machine just has something to it that is, actually I was talking to Matt about this today as we were helping uh, just think of new rules and uh, names for different things for in Dark Potential. But in War Machine, there's a lot of special rules for special characters everywhere. 
And so starting off playing War Machine, you find that everyone knows more than you. And it's almost like you're, almost feels like you're at the butt of like an inside, like a joke. Like you're like going and like everyone knows something except you. And they're like, and you're like moving and they're like, and people like watch you play and you're like, well, it seems like I should do this. And you move and everyone's like, Ugh! and you're like, what? And all of a sudden his caster, like Legion, I was playing a game against Legion and it like moves like 24 inches and like assassinates my caster. It wasn't quite that far, but it was almost that far. And so it's just like, whoa. And like certain things, it's just the hardest part about starting War Machine and playing it like a fun, like competitive level is that if someone's been in it for a much longer time, they have like just dirty tricks everywhere. Just tons of dirty tricks left, right, and center. Signar are kind of more straightforward and I almost like that because I don't feel guilty when I'm like, but all the same thing, most people don't have near the range as me. They kind of run up and they're like, first turn, they're like, eh, and I go, blow them, blow them the kingdom come. And then they still somehow beat me and they just come in because they know the game better than me. They just come assassinate me. Or, or one game, I I, and I don't know if it's going to be out by the time this video goes out, so I won't ruin it completely. But I had, a, I had an opportunity to kill a caster. And instead, I, like, wanted to kill the war beast right beside it. And I was like up there, I'm like, Mah! and I'm like, boom, 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 and I killed the war beast, I'm like, aha! And I like, Kum! hit the caster as an afterthought, and the caster almost died. And I was like, that was my shield arm. If I would've hit you with my spear, you would've been dead, and I could've won this game. Like then and there, instead of drawing it out for a few more turns. And I was like, as I was editing the video, I was like, what was I thinking? It seems so clear and I didn't even think about it when I was playing though. And so it's just, you know, the more you play, it's just, there's a lot more strategy involved and it's not so obvious always what you should do. There's a lot of, you can play very un, unorthodox and still do great. Like when, like I was talking about, <laughs> I'll play against more Scorn Buddy who uh, had clearly won the game Tact, like, using all the tactics and everything, he just set up everything perfectly and killed me. And he won. May I help you? Know where the St. John Ambulance? Downstairs. Downstairs? Yeah. So there's stairway, okay, so there's stairway through that door right there. Or the stairs over there as well through that door. Great, huh? <laughs> Lots of interruptions today. That's okay. We are here to help. And help we shall. Uh, Alright, time for the silver. Mithril Silver, where are you? I don't know how much we've gone, we've, how long we've gone for today. Because, because... Well... It has to keep on starting and stopping. N -n 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 Pirates! Yes, that's a good comment. I love it. <laughs> so, when are you going to convince Dave to play a pie plate game with War Machine? Hey, wasn't he supposed to bring out Cricks? Where'd he go? Oh wait, no, yeah, you know, he distracted me with this. He's, he really wants to, I'll, I'll get him. I will. A little, I was going to say something. It's not offensive here, but it's offensive in other places of the world. And since this is worldwide, I will not say it. Oh, I do love that word. Ah, now you're gone. What are you going to say? I don't, know. I don't know. I don't know. Ooh. This is like Electroblade, too. So I get to paint it all like blue and stuff. Well, I'll just do a base code of Mithril Server. Sliv Sliver. Sliver. I'm not playing magic cards. And... We'll be done. Okay, so... As for Dungeons and Dragons, we have another adventure tonight. And last adventure, actually it's been a few weeks because one of our adventurers had a baby. So we took a couple weeks off. Took care of the little munchkin. Which is totally fine. Because it's nice having a break as a DM. It really is. Although I do have fun doing it. 
Um, so I've been preparing, and so this is the last adventure in this part. I'm just doing like these pre-made Pathfinder missions, the uh, Curse of the Crimson Throne or something like that. I can't remember. I don't care that much. <laughs> I know what's involved in it. Anyways, uh, so they, earlier in the adventure they had found this cave and they went through the cave and this little kid had been stolen and this war was going to break out so you had to go find the kid but, or find the body of the kid and then like the body had been strewn all over you like find his legs somewhere, find his head somewhere else. It was great. But there was a necromancer named Rolf, but you never actually met Rolf. And everyone wanted to fight him, and they almost died because Rolf is like, was like way higher level than them, and would have slaughtered them, and they're like, we're just gonna stay the night. <laughs> because they were all seriously wounded. They were all almost gonna die, it was great. But then, I basically told them that they were gonna die if they stayed, and convinced them to, to leave that night. But then they, because they like skipped half the dungeon through like these tunnels that they found, which was like crazy lucky. Stupid rangers and their high perception. Uh, they, they encountered all of them on the way out. And also because they didn't have the rest of the body. They missed one leg, I think. Or it was, no, it was both legs together, I think. I can't remember. Anyways, they needed more of the body. So as they were coming out, <laughs> they got ambushed because they made so much ruckus and they thought they were so invincible. And... I killed one of them and knocked another two unconscious. It was fantastic. So, but then they barely survived, you know, the group and blah, 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 blah. So they made it out and so they've always hated this Rolf guy because, well, yeah, Necromancer are killing people and almost wiped the party. It was really close to a wipe. It was probably the best mission for me so far. I love trying to kill my players. So last mission, a couple weeks ago when we played, they found a temple of, you know, these disease worshipping mongrels and, you know, the whole city's infected. And they came face to face with Rolf. And Rolf hurt them hard. He hit them, but somehow they like, my brother plays and he's got like a, a a fighter with like cleave, like greater cleave plus like reach. So he's like, I cleave. The six skeletons are dead. I'm like, there goes my meat shield. <laughs> and then the, then the cleric comes in and is like, boom, there's a big burst and 30 more skeletons fall down. I'm like, I thought I made it too hard for them. And all of a sudden, like the whole room's clear and Rolf is like, ah. <laughs> he was probably strong. He had like massive chain lightning that hit like three of them. And the little halfling bard made her, uh, Resistance save, it was like DC 18, and she like got like a plus one, and she's like, 17, I made it! She survived with like five hit points, and otherwise it would have gone negative and permanently killed her, like she would have been dead dead, like dead dead. I was so excited, and she made the impossible roll. 17 or higher. That's why she had to roll, and she did. And then so, uh, but we finished right after they killed Rolf. And he did some other cool things too. Um, and of course our tank from the shipping department here, he, uh, he still has tons of hitch points. Sometimes wa I sometimes wonder why I even bother hitting him. Partly because I think the group would outrage and kill me because I'd be only hitting the weak ones, ignoring the big strong guy whose sole purpose is to absorb HP or to absorb damage. <laughs> so. Gotta make it fun for them. Make it seem like they have a fighting chance, right? Until they get an arrow to the neck, you're dead. Anyway, so this week they fight an even stronger person than Rolf. And so at the end, and then they'll cleanse the temple and be able to heal the city. And then more problems will arise. And we have a new book for that. I think it's part three. But it's, it's a lot of fun, good times, and I really want to kill someone. I really want to kill somebody. I think I might kill my brother because he does the most damage. So I can kill him. 
I might be able to kill someone else as well. And he's so late, he doesn't even level up his character. He gets someone else in the group to do it. He's like, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> he's like, I got this item. What does it do? What? Write it down for me. What's basically, what's my role? Okay. I hit, I do 50 damage. <laughs> it's, it's annoying. But I'd rather play with him than without him. He, he has some good role-playing parts sometimes. Like when he killed all the orphans. <laughs> that was an interesting mission. But that's, and so there's, there's an ongoing joke. It was one of the first missions. You like clear out this like, um, this like shed operation. It's almost like Oliver and company. Like you have all the orphans working for you. So you go in and it's like, the orphans will give up if you kill like their taskmasters kind of thing. Like if they're, they're like the big baddies. And so if you kill them, then the orphans give up and run away. You don't have to kill any innocents. But Aaron was like, orphans are poking me with little spears and pitchforks. They're like doing like four damage. Although at level one and two, that is a lot of damage. He's just like, mm -hmm. <laughs> just like whack it away. Just slaughters them all. Like doesn't even care in the world. Nothing at all. <laughs> then he cut off the heads of the big guys. And as he came to the next room, he held them up. And all the orphans got scared and ran away regardless. Uh, because, well, <laughs> yeah. So that was cool. Oh, man, we've had a lot of fun if I look back on it. But, yeah, so tonight, plan tonight is uh, it, it, the adventure is meant for four players. Now we, we now have six. So I, I haven't completely prepared it. It's like I have like an hour after work before it starts. <laughs> That's enough. I don't need to eat. Um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, so they will, I will have to add a bunch more monsters and NPCs as a wall and I'll spread them out this time so Cleave doesn't massacre me as bad. That's right. Designing an encounter to prey off the weakness of all of my heroes. <laughs> And then, uh, you know, hey, your big baddie in the back, and he has some crazy damaging spells that are going to be awesome to use. So, I'm excited. And that's a bit of for d d Time goes on. People die. People don't die fast enough. I was talking to Justin. Where, you know, he always wants me to lose. I remember I play a bad report, he's like, so did you lose yet? Did you lose yet? It's a funny joke. We just joke around with each other. But we were talking to someone else and this made the offhand comments like every Thursday night or yeah, today's Thursday. Every Thursday night, Dan loses. <laughs> and everyone's gonna be confused. I'm like, I'm the game master, no one dies. <laughs> Right? Because that should be the primary objective of the Games Masters, to kill the heroes. I don't know, if you play it another way, pfft, you're a wuss. Because if you just win without trying, I guess, and to be honest, my group isn't big on role playing. So, there's only so much to do in that department. I keep it minimal, I keep it obvious what they're supposed to do. And then we dungeon crawl. And I try to kill them. I occasionally throw some stuff in there. <laughs> they're always like, what? You're not allowed to do that. And I don't know the rules of this game at all. I'm, so, I'm, I'm like the worst games master in the world. <laughs> I like rely on my hero. Hey, am I allowed to do this with this character? Yeah, okay. He's gonna do that to you then. No, 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 oh crap. <laughs> They always regret telling me things that I can do. And then I try to do things and they try to stop me. I'm like, I'm the Games Master. I can abuse the rules and change the rules of the universe as much as I want. This monster can take three standard actions this turn. But then they get really angry with you. And they revolt. And then you have to calm them down, get the cookies out, bribe them with food. And... They're all good again.
Hopefully none of them watch this. All my secrets. Actually, I really haven't given anything away at all today. At all. Oh, and they recently wrote, no, they, no, they, had, they leveled up last, last turn. Because they haven't, they haven't did a full rest. I, that's, I think that's D&D &D 4 rules. I'm not sure if it's for Pathfinder as well. I actually played D&D &D with Matt. Fourth edition with Matt and Necron Mike and his sister Trish, our tech machine for the store. And we had a good old time. That was like years ago now though. Shield, what color should a shield be? Should I do it, do it all silver? Or do I want to do it white, like I said before? Ugh, it's difficult. Difficult. Hmm. Oh, maybe those should be red as well. Because I painted red on the other ones. I kind of have to fit. But then he has like special plates. I'm doing the shield silver. If I want to change it, it's not that thick of a coat. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I'm probably going to finish up right after the shield. Get back, look at the videos I rendered, and start uploading them. And lots and lots of work to do. Keep busy. But uh, yes, please comment and give me lots of material for next time this happens. I may even draw off other comments from other videos, bring up funny ones that I do, although I usually do that in like rules you got wrong and other stuff. We'll have to see. And I can't believe, well I guess only I got interrupted a couple times today. Is good. So again, thanks for watching everyone. I love you guys, and for those of you who are thinking about getting a Warhammer, I mean War Machine, I always mix it. the War Gaming, <laughs> War Machine, um, I'd say it's worth it. If you're really, really, really into the models and converting and stuff, there's still possibilities even in here. The, I'm going to tell you straight up, the models aren't quite as high standard, but I, to me, they're good enough. I think they're really cool, to be honest. Especially the Sword Knights. I'm really excited. I'm probably gonna. Oh, I'm busy tonight with D and D. Ugh. I'll just tell them to take another week off. I want to paint those Sword Knights because they just how they're positioned. Like they just have, and they got like the long hair, like braid on the back. It reminds me a lot of Zealots from Starcraft. They like run around, and their hair kind of like waves a bit in the background. And they got like the two little, you know, energy blades that like, zzz, 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 zzz. and they're just tough stuff that runs up and, or, and they're just meant to absorb damage, meant to go up and it's almost like the same thing as these sword knights. They just go up, absorb some damage and beat the crap out of stuff. And they got precision strike which is awesome. So they can actually be useful even though they only got POW 10 weapons. Well I guess POW like 3 plus their strength of 7 or something ridiculous like that. Anyways, thanks for watching. Happy Wargaming and my feet are caught as if they're like cross-legged under the chair. I'm free.